Hey, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the problem of inverted perspective, which happens when you're doing object tracking and there's very little perspective available in the shot. Now, just starting out here, I'm going to create a box in my viewport here. And let's just go and we'll start rotating it in the top view. And I want you to take a look at the front view and the left view as I'm doing that. And what you can see is that you can't really tell in what direction the object is spinning from these orthographic views. And an orthographic view, by definition, has no perspective at all. You can see what's happening in the uh, camera view there just because there is perspective present. But in those orthographic views, there is no perspective. You can't tell which way the object is going. It could be in one direction or it could be going in the other direction. And you just can't really tell because there are, in fact, two different solutions that are possible in this situation, one rotating in one direction, the other rotating in the other direction. And that's what actually can happen when you're doing object tracking and there isn't enough perspective available. And that typically happens when the object is a fairly small part of the frame. So we're going to go and take a look at our object tracking shot here. It's in here somewhere. So here we go. The shot is a train going down some tracks. Just to make life a little simpler, we're going to shorten the shot up a little bit. Just so you don't have to worry about that pole. So there's our shot. And in the process, we're, we're limiting the amount of perspective that's available, too. So you notice it's actually a tripod mode shot, and we have this moving object as well. So it's actually a mixed kind of shot. So what we're going to do is start out by running the auto tracker. And it's going to create a bunch of trackers, both on the background that we can use to track the camera. And it also creates trackers on the moving train car as well, which we're going to use to track the moving object. So I just created a moving object and I'm going to go and start lassoing a bunch of these trackers that are on the car. And I'm going to go to the coordinate system panel and I'm going to start changing those trackers to be attached to the moving object rather than to the camera. As we go through the shot, you'll see some more of them appear as things go along. So that looks like we've got those nailed down. So let's just start out by going over to the solver panel. We're going to disable the moving object for the moment. And we'll go back to the camera. We'll set it to be a tripod solve. And we'll just run that tripod solve. So very quickly we get an initial tripod solve for the camera itself. Now let's go back to the moving object. And we're going to create a, a bunch more trackers just to give us a bit more to work with. So we'll just use some of these window frames that provide kind of handy corners. And 
let's go and select all of these. And we need to go and make them all to be match mode trackers, which I should have done before I created the first one. And we're going to change the key value for these things so that we're rekeying them maybe every 10 frames. Let's just go back and we'll select the ones that I just created. So we'll let them run through the shot there. And maybe we'll go over to the simul track view and we've got our four trackers selected. So we can just go through and take a quick look at them. I'm just looking at this column here and see that they stay you know, pretty much on track throughout the length of the shot. So good enough, we'll uh, lock those up. So now we've got the some additional supervised trackers set up. So let's go back to the solver and we're going to set the camera into you know, the solving mode for the object to be automatic. We're just leaving the camera solve alone. So now we'll run the overall solve. And let's see what we have. Well, okay, this, this looks a little interesting. You know, here's our solve for the object. And it doesn't look like things are really pointing in the direction that you'd expect. So let's let's look at this a little more carefully. Here's a tracker at the beginning of the uh, train, and it's kind of off to the side there. Meanwhile, you know, here's a tracker that should be at the back of the tr of the train, and it's kind of off to the front, and it's actually to the side. So, you know, on the, on the face of it, you can see something has gone wrong here that the order of the trackers is, is messed up. Things that are closer to the camera are farther away and vice versa. And if you look at this top view here, you'll see that the top view has the train car rotating clockwise which doesn't make sense if you think about it from the overall camera view considering the camera to be stationary the train is rotating the other direction so this is the inverted perspective problem right here things are in the wrong order and we've got a sob it looks like it's okay the RMSR is okay, it's just not the one that we want. And if you think back to that original view of the box spinning, you see what's happened. There were the two different solutions, and we've just got the wrong one, basically. So what can we do about this? So there are, there are actually a bunch of different things that we could do, depending on the particular situation. Just adding more trackers might help. Uh, especially if we can get trackers that are close up and trackers that are far away. That'll generate some more perspective in the scene. We can also you know, try the slow but sure here and have Synthize work a little harder to try and find an initial solution and hope that that comes out to be the one that we want. And essentially that might just you know, randomly get the one that we want for that matter too. Similarly, we could turn on the begin and end frames here that are setting the frames over which Synthize is looking for the perspective and sometimes with just picking different values for those you can just you know luck into the other solution because you know like I said in this case basically you can get either solution and random but a more sophisticated approach to this that's uh, more direct is to use this direction hint here that's the second entry 
on the solver panel, the second drop down. And what this is saying is where is the camera going relative to the motion or relative to the object? Assuming that the object is stationary and the camera is flying around the object, the object standing still, now where is the camera going? So in this case, the, the camera is going around basically to the left. It's starting at the beginning. We're seeing the right-hand side of the, the train here. As we go off into the distance, the camera has swung around some to the left. The camera is moving to the left with respect to the train. The solution that we have here has it the other way around. So we can just plug in this motion hint, say that the camera is moving to the left, rerun the solution, and now look what we have. We have all these trackers that are lined up basically with the motion of the train. The one here in the back is far away. The one in the front is close up. And you know, just to show what happens if, if we were to pick the other one here, you know, now we can go back to the other solution if we wanted just just to show you again. So just by giving this little motion hint, you can control exactly which of those two possible solutions you get. And depending on the motion of the camera on any particular shot, the motion of the camera might be fairly complicated. It might go first to the right and then back to the left. And so you have to say what portion of the shot you're talking about. And the way that you do that is using these begin and end frames. So, you know, here I can go and set what section of the shot I'm talking about. So this is saying maybe from frames 2 to 22, the camera is moving to the left. So maybe in the rest of the shot, it's really doing something else. So that gives you direct control over which of the solutions Synthesis is going to get. Of course, it may be moving up or down as well, or of course uh, pushing in or pulling back as well. So there are a bunch of different uh, options available, a bunch of different ways perhaps to deal with uh, inverted perspective problems. One thing I'll point out here, you know, you'll see that we have this overall solution we've, where we've got a camera solve that you know, is based on a tri tripod solve, as well as this full 3D solve. In this situation, it's the tripod solve that's really letting us get a good value for the lens field of view. By definition, when we have these inverted perspective shots, there's very little perspective, and there's not really very much information available to pick out the lens field of view value. And, and you'll often see values where it will drop down to the very lower limit, like five degrees, something like that. That's it's saying it's a telephoto shot because basically it's getting closer and closer to that orthogonal view that we saw in the beginning, the front view and the left view and so on. So, you know, here we have the tripod solve and, and you know, when there's the motion in the shot to be able to do that, that's a great thing to do to pick up that lens field of view. But in other shots, if, if we aren't able to get a track for the overall camera motion, the camera might just be stationary, then you're going to typically need to use some value from the set that's been recorded to generate that you know, to plug in a lens value or, you know, a value from a different shot, whatever. The exact value that you use there isn't going to be super duper critical because by definition, it's not making too much difference. If it was making a whole lot of difference, then Thais would be able to figure out what the correct field of view is, value actually is. So if there's no information there, you can plug in something that's your best, you know, best estimate and be able to use that. So this gives you an idea of what what sort of thing you can get from these kind of shots. Typically here maybe now I just go into the 3D panel and we'll just go and flip on the uh, whole mode and since this is moving down and you know, looking down a bit I'll just flatten out that train path a little. So I can go and just adjust this coordinate system for the tripod 
move, you know, just directly. Or, of course, if I have some other information about the scene, about this uh, location of some of these pos positions in 3D, then I could use that to set up the tripod uh, coordinate system as well. But uh, that's pretty much a separate topic. So hopefully you've uh, learned a bit about this inverted perspective problem. It is something that comes up frequently, and it's often something that can be fixed very quickly just by using that direction hint value for the object. Thanks a lot. Take care.